Now let me illustrate for you how powerful hormones are. Okay? This is how powerful they are. Leptin. How many people have heard of the hormone leptin? Anybody in here heard of leptin? Okay, so a few people. Let me tell you what leptin does. Leptin is like your fuel gauge, like the fuel gauge in your car. When you eat and your fat cells grow, they secrete hormones. And the hormone that it secretes is leptin. And leptin's job is to go over here to the brain and say, hey brain, we got a lot of fat on our body, please stop being so hungry all the time. And then it says, hey thyroid gland, speed up your metabolism a little bit so we can burn off some of this fat. Okay? That's what leptin says. Now here's the problem. You can become hormone resistant. How many of you guys have heard of insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome, right? Even if you haven't heard of this, you know exactly what this is. If we came into this room today and there was a very strong smell in this room, what would we do? <coughs> we would cover our nose, right? Our eyes might water a little bit. But after we're in this room for a little while, what happens? Yeah. Right, we get used to it, right? So we don't notice it anymore. Well, when leptin is around in very high amounts all the time, we stop listening. So the brain never gets the signal and the thyroid never gets the signal. How many guys like the Golden Corral? <laughs> right? Right, so we like to go to crowd. These all-you-can-eat buffets, there's people that go to these all-you-can-eat buffets that have plenty of fat to lose but cannot keep themselves from eating. And it's not because they're weak or they don't have willpower, right? It's because their hormones are out of balance. Telling them to eat less and exercise more is like telling them to go jump in front of a truck. It is not going to happen. Their hormones are not working for them. Right? This is part of the big problem here. So hopefully that illustrates you how powerful hormones can be. Part of what the new me diet, this metabolic effect that we're going to teach you about does, is it resets leptin so your brain and your thyroid can hear it once again. Now, you probably, a lot of you guys have heard a lot of stuff about hormones, right? So we tend to think in good and bad. How many people think cortisol is a bad hormone? Right? So they say, okay, cortisol, that, I heard that stores fat around my belly, that's bad. Insulin is bad. Some people say growth hormone is good, or those kinds of things. Hormones do not work that way. And so I want you to kind of understand how this works, so that when you're at home, and you're reading the newspaper, you're watching something on TV, or you see a new exercise or diet program come up that tells you a hormone is good or bad, you can understand this. If all of us today, right, we leave this talk and we go to a black tie party, right, what are we going to do? We're going to wear certain things, right? We're going to drink certain types of beverages. We're going to eat certain types of food. We're going to have certain types of conversation, right? If we instead go to this toga party, right, we're going to wear different things. We're going to eat different kinds of foods, right? D drink different kinds of beverages. This is how hormones work. Cortisol. When it combines with growth hormone and testosterone, which is a very important hormone for men and women, it becomes a fat-burning hormone. Isn't that interesting? Cortisol, when it's in the right social environment with other hormones, it will help you burn fat. However, when cortisol is around with large amounts of insulin and leptin resistance, like we talked about before, right, it's going to make you store fat. This is how hormones work. Now, let's talk about exercise now. So, this is the introduction of hormonal exercise. If you go to your doctor, right, and you say, look, I want to lose weight, what are they going to tell you to do? And what type of exercise are they going to tell you to do? It's going to be this, right? It's going to be this. They want you, I want you to do this. And I want you to do it for 20 to 60 minutes, and I want you to do it at intensity where you can still talk to the person next to you, right? That's what they're going to tell you. That is healthy exercise. That is caloric exercise. That is not the best fat loss exercise, okay? Healthy exercise versus fat loss exercise. There is something in exercise called the afterburn, metabolic afterburn. We call it the metabolic effect, okay? There is an intensity threshold when you exercise that when you breach it, 
you go into what is known as anaerobic metabolism. Very simple what that is. It just means you are breathless and you're uncomfortable. Okay? It's not a place you really want to be for long. And the truth is, you can't stay there for long. But something magical happens when you go to that place. The body registers a disturbance. And it says, hey, something's going on here I'm not used to. I better release some hormones like growth hormone and testosterone and adrenaline and noradrenaline and cortisol to help me get through this disturbance. And what those hormones do all together is they help you burn fat after the workout. And it can last for 24 to 48 hours, which I'm going to show you some studies in a minute. Now, if you do this, this is great. This is healthy. This is wonderful stuff. But it is not going to get you to that uncomfortable place. Everybody knows what this feels like. If you've ever climbed a large flight of steps, right? When do you breathe the hardest? While you're going up the steps or after you get to the top? It's the top, right? So you get to the top and you're like, Whew. and it doesn't matter if you're in good shape or not, right? You still feel that effect. That is what we're talking about. How many people exercise to that point? Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your physical ability, doesn't matter your fitness level. Everyone's level is different. You go to that uncomfortable place. Now, you're not going to be able to stay there. So what you're going to have to do is what? Rest and then do it again. Very different than this, right? Very different. Now, I'm going to teach you how to do this in your own workouts, okay? You can do this no matter what you're doing with your workouts. You can accomplish this afterburn effect by paying attention to what I call and Keone calls the B's and the H's, okay? The first B is breathless, just what we talked about, right? Going up that large flight of steps, and it corresponds with the ability to talk, okay? So what you do is you push into that breathless zone, and then you rest until you can do it again. That's the first B. The second B is burn, okay? So if you've ever done mine and Keone's workout, the metabolic effect, some of the instructors will have you doing stuff like this, have you down low and have you pulsing like this. And what they're doing is they're trying to make your muscles burn. The reason they're doing that is because of lactate or lactic acid. Now for those of you who are exercise buffs in this group, We've often seen lactate as a bad thing. How many of you guys have heard of lactic acid in the muscle burn and how you want to avoid that? Lactic acid is actually now a hormone. They just discovered a receptor that lactic acid will bind to, lactate will bind to. And guess what it does? One of the things it does is trigger these other hormones like growth hormone and testosterone to help you burn fat and build muscle. So this burn is actually good for you. If you go to a gym, right, we all go to a gym together and we see people on a chest press machine, what do we see? So you're watching them, I'm watching them, and they're going, and all of a sudden you see their face, and then they drop the weight, and they back off, right? That's what they do, they just stop. Well, what if they went a little bit further and really learned to harness that burn? They would get a better result. They would be doing hormonal exercise rather than just caloric exercise. The other piece here is heavy, heavy weight, same thing, the weight starts getting too heavy, what happens? People drop it. You want to train with heavy weights because that's another thing that will trigger this hormonal response. And the final thing is heat. You want to get hot and sweaty. Now how many people do you know that get all four of these things in their workout? Not many, right? This is a tool that we all need to make sure that we're doing not just healthy exercise, but also fat loss exercise. For those of us who are after body change, we have to make that key distinction.